flowers. It's a sign of spring, adds a bit of colour and cheer and hope to our world, doesn't it? We're uh, fortunate, aren't we, in the Northern Hemisphere that Easter happens as the spring emerges and new life bursts forth from the ground and the earth is awakened. It's a very visual help in the declaration of resurrection and new hope. Uh, early in the morning, women went to the tomb to anoint the body. The stone was rolled away, the body was missing. Uh, an angel announced, you're looking for Jesus. He was crucified, but he's risen. He's not here. Go and tell the disciples. He goes before you. There are four gardens of significance in the Bible. There's the Garden of Eden where Adam and Eve messed up and disobeyed God. There's the Garden of Gethsemane where the second Adam, Jesus, obeyed God. Not my will, but your will be done, he said. Then there's the third garden, the Garden of Resurrection, where the tomb was, where Jesus rose. The, the sign of recreation, hope of God's new creation. And then the final garden is the New Eden, recorded in the final book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, where the new heaven and the new earth are joined together and the tree of life is there in the middle, bringing hope, bringing joy and bringing people together of all nations, all tribes and tongues to love each other and to praise God. As you uh, enjoy the flowers and the emerging beauty all around us, give thanks to God for God's eternal springtime and for God at work through the Spirit, bringing hope and renewal to all God's creation and to encourage us all to participate in that. Go and tell. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we follow you to the cross. Help us now to follow you beyond. In the resurrection hope, help us to declare good news that you come to bring renewal and hope to all creation. Alleluia. Amen. <laughs>